Hey guys, this is Andy Tran with the Inner Bark Outdoors channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I do weekly videos on the outdoors, survival, do-it-yourself, and reviews. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the stuff we're going to be doing at the cabin in 2020, and it's a big project. We're going to be doing a lot of thinning, hazard tree removal, and also some fuel management. This year I'm learning a lot about saws, using the best oil, gas mix, and in some cases, finding the best gas cans. I've been pleasantly surprised with the county line brand of chainsaw chains. These are carried at the tractor supply stores and are really cheap. I got two of them for 40 bucks. There is a lot of blown down and fallen trees, and also there's a lot of slash from those trees that are keeping the undergrowth from growing. This extra fuel also increases the fire risk. This is a chainsaw that I got second hand, and it works really well. The previous owner took really good care of it, and it's just perfect for the type of stuff that I'm doing here at the cabin. The model saw that I'm using is a Still 034, and it's considered a pro saw. The biggest difference between a pro saw and a consumer saw is that the parts are much more easily replaceable. So as the parts break down or wear out, I can easily get this thing up and running again with just a quick repair. Whenever I'm running the saw, I'm going to be using my chainsaw chaps. The chainsaw chaps are lined with Kevlar and the Kevlar threads will wrap around the sprocket if the bar ever gets in contact with the front of my legs. In theory, this should increase my survival rate significantly. All these piles of sawdust is a really good sign of progress for me. I'm also taking a lot of dead trees down that threaten to fall across the driveway. Also when I'm running the saw, I like to wear the feller's hat. A feller's hat is comprised of a hard hat, face shield, and some earmuffs. The hard hat keeps the branches and debris from really damaging the top of your head. And the face mask keeps all that stuff that's getting kicked up by the chainsaw out of your face. And since these gas saws are super loud, you always need to have some sort of ear protection. There's also a lot of snag trees that pose a great risk to the structure and also the driveway as well. These ones are a little bit nerve wracking because you never really know how they can fall. The more I've been using a chainsaw, the more and more I appreciate a really good set of chainsaw wedges. The chainsaw wedges help you get your chainsaw unstuck and it also helps guide the tree a little bit when you're falling it. All right, so I am up this tree. So the snag that I'm tackling uh, today, the pretty bad one, this thing's probably at least 100 feet tall, um, but it's snagged in a few different trees and I'm climbing up one of the trees and uh, cause this thing's gotta go as well. So I'm limbing on my way up. I don't know how far I am. How, like 50 feet? Yeah, 50, 60. 50, 60 feet. So I'm limbing on my way up and uh, here it is. And so I'm gonna try and uh, cut it free from here and that way it kind of protects the cabin. So uh, if you don't hear from me after this, that means something terrible has happened. All right, so quick video. So I just did a project that I've been kind of waiting to do for a bit and that was to put up this bat house. And this is from White Horse. The wife got it for me for Christmas because she knows how much I like bats and how much I hate mosquitoes. And so um, normally these are mounted to a flat surface, but we don't really have that here at the cabin. So um, I'm up on top of this tree that we topped because uh, half of it's dying and it's leading towards the cabin. There's a cabin right there. And so uh, what I did was I took some pressure treated two by fours and created a flat surface for it to mount on with these L brackets. And then on the top of the uh, top of the top two by four, I put some flashing there and it kind of wraps behind and I used some uh, some steel roof screws right there and then for the actual roof of the thing I, I took some uh, some sheet aluminum which we had at the cabin and I also fastened that down using the same screws and at the edge here I bent it down a little bit as sort of a drip guard 
so the water's not gonna get sucked up with water tension and then go underneath. So it should be pretty good and waterproof. And I'm approximately, uh, say about 30 or so feet up, maybe 40. But my job here is done, so hopefully um, the bats find this thing. It's facing south-southeast, so it's gonna get a lot of that morning sun to heat it up. And uh, I guess they like a lot of high heat. So it's painted black and ooh, mosquitoes are still up here. And so now I'm gonna go down. See ya. To help keep the wildfires from spreading, we're also gonna clean the trunks of the healthy trees. With the lack of a better tool, I'm just using the back of my ax to hit these off. Since they're so brittle, it usually just takes a small tap to break them. We're chipping a lot of the smaller dammer stuff with the machine that we got for $100. It didn't work at the time, but it just took a little bit of carburetor cleaner and some elbow grease to get it running again. I've since sharpened the blades and replaced a few bolts, and now it runs much better than the video. For larger stuff, we're going to be splitting it up and making a lot of firewood. And the really nice stuff we're going to be turning into lumber. So that's pretty much it for the video. If you guys have any suggestions on things that we can do or how to do it better, go ahead and leave it in the comments. If you guys enjoy the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And also check out my Facebook page, Instagram, and other social media. It really helps me know these are the kind of videos you want to see. But as always, take care out there. Bye.